Welcome to the Black Mage 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide, we'll cover all of your skills as you train to be rescued out of your ley lines better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this. to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you could research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to draw players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for a Realm Reborn, level 60 for Heavensward stuff, level 70 for Stormblood skills, level 80 for Shadowbringers, and level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add sprint and limit breaks to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card in the corner for a video on it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes, or skill changes, or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Black Mage is a DPS job all about explosions and being a turret. Much of your experience is going to be standing still, or finding ways to stand still better. As you level, you will gain several good ways of being able to move and attack, but still ultimately seek to be in a mobile turret, where you can. Your main mechanic is that you swap back and forth between ice and fire stances, and using the spells of the same elements. You even throw in a little bit of lightning, but most of what you want to be doing is making things burn. Much of your play will be learning how to maximize the most fire spells you can, while also making sure to best use your time when you're not in fire mode. Is what I want to say, but only good black mages do that. Great black mages do actual black magic in real life and break all intended rotations apart and make optimal play feel like you're purposefully playing poorly. I'll not be going over that here. Just be ready for absolute chaos if you wish to become the best of the best. To play a Thaumaturge, you either start as one or pick the class up in the Uldar Thaumaturge Guild after completion of your level 10 class quest as your first class. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Level 1, Blizzard. This spell has a 2.5 second cast time, 2.5 second recast time, as all your spells will have, and costs 400 mana. It does 180 potency of damage. This is a super basic spell, but it has a special effect. Grants Umbral Ice or removes Astral Fire for 15 seconds if it's Umbral Ice. I'll go over this in a moment. Level 2, Fire. Has the same cast and recast speed as Blizzard, but costs 800 mana, double the cost. It has 180 potency of damage, the same potency. It also has the reverse special effect of Blizzard. It grants Astral Fire and removes Umbral Ice. Let's take one more skill before we discuss those two things. Level 1, Aspect Mastery. Casting with Fire and Ice spells will most all grant you Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. You can have one stack of it and it lasts for 15 seconds. But the important part is second. While under Astral Fire or Umbral Ice, the opposite element will cost no MP to cast. So when under Umbral Ice, fire spells are free, aside from Flayer, which we'll see later on. As a result, we're going to want to swap back and forth between elements, but not just haphazardly. There is a method that is dictated by those buffs. Umbral Ice increases your MP regeneration and lowers the cost of ice spells, so using Blizzard over and over functionally gives you infinite MP, but that means you're sitting on a resource and not using it. This is where Astral Fire comes in. If you actually use Fire, you'll notice the mana cost doubles, which burns through your mana extremely quickly. 
However, Astral Fire also increases the damage done by fire element spells. This power boost isn't listed anywhere, just stated to exist by the job gauge help window. For our purposes, the actual number doesn't matter, just know at higher levels it's a 1.8 times multiplier, or it nearly double the power of any listed potencies. So let's take fire. With a 1.8 times multiplier, it's actually 324 potency. Again, that specific power isn't until later levels, but the same reasons and same motions apply at these lower levels. Further, this is where this thing comes in. The element gauge, or compass as it looks, is going to have no less than four different elements tied to it by level cap. This is one of the only jobs where I recommend going into the HUD layout and potentially using the simple mode. Try it at least. I will however be using the compass for the duration of the video. As a result, our rotation will always and forever be use fire to empty our mana, then use ice to refill our mana. The actual steps in the middle will change often on our way to level 90, but this general rule remains the same going forward and forever. Let's keep going before we build any real rotations though. Level 4, Transpose. This is an ability, which means you can use it between any major spells, also called Weaving. It has a recast time of 5 seconds and no cast time. This takes any Astral Fire or Umbral Ice you have and turns it into one stack of the opposite element. The problem without using Transpose is that it would take two casts to get the opposite buff. The first cast of Fire would remove Umbral Ice, the second grant Astral Fire. So instead, this is how we swap between elements, at least for a while. When you're out of mana for fire, hit transpose to start throwing ice. When you hit max mana, transpose to start throwing fire. A utilitarian use of this is in dungeons between groups of enemies. Killing everything doesn't mean you just have to wait before the next battle to hit buttons again. When all enemies die, transpose into ice to regain all of our mana before the next fight. Then hit transpose back and forth during the walk to the next group. This maintains your Astral Fire and Umbral Ice buff for the entire dungeon. Starting a battle with one stack of either buff is always going to be better than starting with no buff. Also, you can do this during boss fights later on. Trials down the line will have the boss go invincible or leave the arena entirely. Until they come back or become susceptible to damage again, keep hitting Transpose to maintain your buff. Level 6, Thunder. On the normal 2.5 second cast timer, this costs 200 MP. It does a pitiful 30 potency to an enemy, but puts a damage over time, or dot, on the enemy for 21 seconds. This dot does 35 potency of damage. Dots tick every 3 seconds which means this will hit the enemy seven times. In total, this does 280 potency of damage. This is better than even fire, but ideally, most of all your thunder casting will be done during Umbral Ice. The mana cost doesn't really come into play with either element, and only using it in ice is more of a guideline than a rule. Further mechanics will actually make us use lightning during fire on purpose. Just keep it in mind that you're better off replacing ice spells if possible, but don't just ignore thunder because you're in fire. Generally, only put thunder on enemies you think will live long enough to get the most out of the duration. If enemies are dying fast, you may want to just skip it. On bosses, let the full duration run before you refresh the buff. And bosses, you'll definitely be using this. At level 8, we have our first roll action, Addle. These skills are extremely good and extremely important, fit them on your hotbars, but I will not be going over these. If you want an overview of your roll actions, there's a card in the corner and in the description for your perusal. We also have Sleep at level 10. Level 12, Blizzard 2. This is our first AoE, or Area of Effect attack. This has a long 3 second cast time, longer than the normal 2.5 second recast. It also costs 800 mana, which doesn't mean much in Umbral Ice, which it will grant. It will remove fire first, so you still need Transpose. 
It does 100 potency to your target and all enemies within 5 yarms of the original target. On two enemies, this is 200 potency. Higher than Blizzard 1, but not stronger than Blizzard 1. I'll save you the deeper math and just say, divide potency by the cast time. Blizzard 2 is only stronger than Blizzard 1 on three or more enemies. So in dungeons, when the tank picks up a group of enemies, use Blizzard 2 instead of Blizzard 1, if there are three or more enemies. You can also put Thunder on multiple enemies, but this isn't usually worth it. Things die too fast to be worth it. Just save Thunder for when there are only one or two strong enemies, like bosses. Level 15, Scathe. This is a class quest skill. You can't use it or even reasonably talk about it without doing it quests. Do them. This isn't the only skill locked by quests. This will, however, be the only time I talk about it. Top left is the denotion of this quest lock, and will appear for every skill that is locked by quests. As for Scathe, it's bad. It's an instant cast time, 2.5 recast, and costs 800 mana. It does 100 potency of damage to a target with a 20% chance to do 200 potency of damage, averaging out to be 120 potency. This is really bad. On average, it's two-thirds of the power of Blizzard. All this has going for it is the fact that it has no cast time. Part of learning to become a good Black Mage is learning how to move and cast at the same time, or not need to move at all. Slide casting, using your other instant casts instead of Scathe. If you have absolutely no other options to continue attacking, use Scathe. So I won't say to just leave it off your bars, but try your best to use everything else in your toolkit before considering Scathe. Some damage is better than no damage, but Turret Mage is your goal. At level 18, we have the roll action, Swift Cast. Immediately after Scathe, huh? Yeah, use this for movement if you can too. Level 18, Fire 2. Much like Blizzard 2, this is our AoE. 3 second cast time and costs 1500 MP, which during Astral Fire is a 3000 mana cost. It grants Astral Fire and removes ice. So again, transpose. So now the math of when you use the AoE is a lot more rough. Sure, it's stronger on just three enemies, but the cost is so much higher. It's still safe to use on just three enemies typically. Luckily, most tanks tend to grab even at least two groups of enemies. But yeah, Black Mage AoE is generally rough if you want to use it properly. It'll get a lot cleaner later on. Level 20, Maim and Mend. This is a very simple power boost. 10% of one. Your numbers as a Black Mage are high enough that you might actually notice a small increase. But enemies are also getting 10% stronger. Within a Realm Reborn, this isn't really a power boost and more just the baseline. Level 20, Aspect Mastery 2. What isn't just baseline is Aspect Mastery getting an upgrade. We can now stack two levels of Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. This increases the damage output and mana regeneration of the buffs. Though this doesn't really do anything really, just makes you a bit more stronger. Then we have Lucid Dreaming at level 24. Black Mage kinda never uses this. Level 26, Thunder 2. This is our AoE version of Thunder. It has a 2.5 second cast time and costs 400 mana. It does 50 potency of damage to a target and all enemies within 5 yams. And for 18 seconds does 15 potency of damage as a dot. The dot in total is worth 90 potency for a total total of 140 potency of damage. In any group enemy fight, throw out a Thunder 2 instead of trying to put Thunder on 3 or 4 enemies. Once again, generally the MP cost doesn't get in the way of using this in Astral Fire, but it's better than using a Blizzard 2 if you can help it. And once enemies start having higher levels of HP, you'll be wanting to maintain this dot on enemies. Level 28, Thundercloud. This alone entirely changes your relationship with Thunder. Thunder 1 and Thunder 3, which we'll get later, have a 10% chance of granting you Thundercloud. Thunder 2 and Thunder 4, again later, have a 3% chance of giving you Thundercloud. This percent chance is on every enemy affected, for every tick of the dot. Let's say there are two enemies and you place Thunder on both of them. Each enemy gives you 10% chance to proc Thundercloud every 3 seconds until the dots run out. 
Thunder 2, if you hit five enemies with it, it's five separate 3% chances, or a total of 15% chance, but math doesn't work like that. You can very easily just not get Thundercloud per cast, but the chances are pretty high you do get it. And what happens when you do get it? The buff lasts for 40 seconds and has a few very strong effects. You can tell you have a proc with your buff bar or the glowing border on Thunder, and you get one use during the timer. First off, Thundercloud removes cast times from your Thunder attacks. This can be used for movement if need be. Damage while on the run, but only one cast's worth. Secondly, it's free to cast. Not a big deal given the cost is already low. But finally, you do a big hit to the enemy. The full damage of the dot will be added to the base damage of the cast. So take Thunder. In total, Thunder was worth 280 potency of damage when the dot runs the full course. Casting Thunder while under the effect of Thundercloud will make the cast do 280 potency of damage instead of just 30. And it will refresh the dot to the maximum timer. This then also makes Thunder 2 a 100 potency AoE that refreshes the timer. This makes the win of refreshing dots a bit more flexible. Due to the 40 second timer, you can hold the Thundercloud for as long as you need. But if you hold it, you might lose more procs of Thundercloud. Ultimately, follow the rule of use your procs if more than half the dots timer is spent. This can be both in fire and ice phases, depending on the situation. We will be using procs for intended uses later on, and even route it into our rotation specifically. For now, just remember to use it for extra power and extra movement. Level 30, Mana Ward. Mana Ward is a defensive ability. On a 2 minute cooldown, this gives you a shield for 20 seconds that is worth 30% of your HP. You're a squishy little mage, so 30% extra health for blocking a hit or two is huge. Even in party content, this is a good skill. Is the boss doing some raid-wide attack? Mana Ward and reduce the damage. Avoidable damage and not able to dodge for some reason? Mana Ward. Mana Ward? Mana Ward. The only issue is trying to use it when it is needed most. You only get it once in a while, so you're incentivized to learn fights even more just to keep yourself alive. To obtain the Black Mage job, you must first reach level 30 and complete the level 30 Thaumaturge quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, Self Management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, Mana Font. This is a massive, three minute long cooldown, but has a very important effect. Using Mana Font gives you an instant 3,000 mana back. This allows you to extend your fire phase by one or two attacks. Early on this isn't amazing or anything, but later on can really improve our openers. For now, just know to use it on cooldown, only in your fire phase. You don't need mana regen during ice, leave this for more fire. Mana font, then use another fire 2 or two more fire ones. Level 35, Aspect Mastery 3. This is an extremely important level for Black Mage. First off, you can now have three stacks of Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. Secondly, Fire 2 and Blizzard 2 will now grant us three stacks of the buff instead of just one. You also don't need to transpose anymore, because it grants the three stacks no matter what buff you already have. Even if you already have Astral Fire, Blizzard 2 will give you Umbral Ice 3. So now you're going to regen mana extremely quickly to the point of absurdity. And now have the 1.8 times multiplier for fire attacks. Plus, ice spells are now entirely free while under Umbral Ice 3. Umbral Ice 3 is a full-on 100% reduction to mana costs for ice spells, except for the first cast of a fight or any spots where you must transpose during downtime, such as when a boss goes invincible, you will now never spend mana on ice spells, a very small but useful buff. Finally, the opposite element's cast times are cut in half when at three stacks of your buff. So when at three stacks of Umbral Ice, Fire 2 has a 1.5 second cast time to swap over to Fire Attacks. 
on top of the usual free mana cost. But it gets better, because we get a few other attacks at this level. Level 35, Fire 3, and Blizzard 3. You can't really talk about one without the other. Both of these skills have a 3.5 second cast time and do 260 potency of damage to a single enemy. Blizzard 3 is 800 mana, and Fire 3 is 2000 mana. But most of the time, that cost will never come into play, because this is our replacement for Transpose in our single target rotation. Much like Blizzard 2 and Fire 2, it grants three stacks of the buff of its own element. Keep in mind, mana costs for fire double. That's 4,000 mana for one cast of fire 3. It's also much slower than fire 1. Fire 3 is not for spamming. You use fire 3 to get into fire phase with three stacks immediately. And the same for blizzard 3. You use it to swap two ice when in astral fire and nothing else. Because cast times are cut in half when you have three stacks of the elements, it's a 1.75 second cast time, and you're immediately trading three stacks of one element for the other, other than when there is downtime and we have to use transpose. You should now always have three stacks of fire or ice. This level rounds out our single target attacks so well to the point that it is a good time to finally go over rotations. The thing about Black Mage is your rotation changes constantly, at least if you want to remain optimal. We'll be attempting to slowly build towards the currently accepted level 90 opener. Black Mage goes in waves of recommending Ice First and Fire First rotations at this level. We'll be talking a Fire First rotation here. Keep in mind you can start with Ice Phase as needed or if you're already in it, due to transposing between groups of enemies. As for fire openers, we prioritize putting out big damage from the very beginning. We'll get the most phases of fire we can in the fight, and once it becomes relevant, align with party buffs. And it ends up being mostly a perfect circle. But also let me note this pre-pull section before talking through the actual rotation. The problem with this is a lot of tanks are bad, and do not use countdowns no matter what content you do, even raids. The goal is to line up the 3 second cast time with a countdown timer, or just expecting the tank to pull during the cast at best. In most cases, you'll just have to do the cast after the pull has already begun. You want to finish the cast as soon as possible, but sometimes you just gotta roll with it. Pre-pull, Fire 3. Thunder 1. Fire 1, Fire 1, Fire 1, Fire 1, Mana Font, Fire 1, Fire 1, Blizzard 3, Thunder 1, Blizzard 1, Fire 3, and continue on from there. As I said, we start with Fire 3 to immediately get into our Fire phase, pre-casting to attempt to cut the long cast time short. We also put up Thunder as soon as possible the low, low MP cost not affecting our mana at all. Then we simply just... spam fire. Mana font after you use at least one fire to get it on cooldown. It's used late here, only specifically to get us used to the timing later. We then Blizzard 3 for the short cast time, big damage, and free Umbral Ice 3 to quickly generate mana. We use Thunder 1 here because by the time the cast ends, the dot will have dropped off. If we got Thundercloud, all the better, since strong move. This Blizzard one here is sometimes not needed at all. Sometimes you will get to max mana even when you skip this Blizzard. However, do it for consistency. We'll be using at least one ice move in all of our openers, and if you aren't watching your mana, you can go into fire too soon. But if you see you already have 10,000 mana, just skip it. Then you just go back to fire and keep going. Every Thunder can be used when under Umbral Ice from this point forward, though if you get Thundercloud procs early, don't be afraid to use them as mentioned during the Thundercloud section. Even during fire, you can refresh the timer and even get procs of the buff for movement. Just be ready to adjust as needed with your uses. But now let's karaoke opener. I will be going through the rotation again, but speaking the spells as they come out. 
While we're early on, it's not going to be all too busy. Later on, we do get a couple things to make Black Mage a lot less of a slow turret mage, at least for openers, and also let me note spell speed. Black Mage tends to love a lot of spell speed, and this can massively change the speed of openers. If for some reason my opener seems to not align with yours, it could be a large difference in spell speed. Pre-pull, Fire 3, Thunder 1, Fire 1, Fire 1, Fire 1, Fire 1, Manifont, Fire 1, Fire 1, Blizzard 3, Thunder 1, Blizzard 1, Fire 3, continue from there. But now let's also talk about AoE rotation quick. You just spam Blizzard 2 and Fire 2, throw up Thunder during your Ice Phase. It won't be until level 50 we have any real rotations to worry about. Keep your dot running, keep throwing ice and fire, throw in a mana font for an extra fire too if need be. Level 40, Maim and Mend 2. This time it's a 30% increase in power, a 20% increase over Maim and Mend 1. Again, same as before, this is just passive power boosting, it's intended part of a Realm Reborn balancing. You're not going to be dealing with this in any active way. Level 40, Freeze. This skill is kind of pointless, but does come into play a tiny bit and a lot more later. It has a shorted 2.8 second cast time and can only be used when under Umbral Ice. It does 120 potency to the target and all enemies within 5 yarms, just like Blizzard 2. So it's a tiny bit faster and does a little bit more damage for a cast you'll be spending on Thunder 2 anyway. By the time you cast Thunder 2, you'll usually be back at max mana, and if you don't need to cast Thunder 2 because of a lucky Thundercloud proc, you'll get just one use of Freeze, which honestly won't be any different when it becomes useful, but simply put, if you need to wait for mana, use Freeze instead of Blizzard 2. Blizzard 2 is now relegated to only swapping from Fire to Ice. Level 42, Firestarter. This is a massive pace changer for your fire phase. Every time you cast fire 1, there's a 40% chance you get a proc of fire starter. When you have fire starter, you may cast fire 3 for free and with no cast time. This extends your fire phase every single time you get a proc, because you want to be spending these. The only reason we ignored fire 3 before was because such of a long cast time and high cost. Both of those are now free. 260 potency is 80 more than Fire 1, plus the Astral Fire buff, plus being free. And when we have 5, 6 uses of Fire 1 every Fire phase, that can be a use of Fire 3 every time. I mean, look at the footage. You could see me Fire 1 and immediately Fire 3 over and over. If you're in a bad position when you get a Fire Starter, use the free Instant Cast to move. This is a lot more common than Thundercloud, but just like those, they can help you keep putting out damage while moving. You may not want to ever move, but you do need to move sometimes. Using what movement tools you have is extremely important, but don't hold your fire starters just for movement. This is a big part of your damage at this level. As for how this affects our opener though, just use Fire 3 anytime you get a fire starter proc, it otherwise doesn't really change. At level 44 is the final roll action, Surecast. Level 45, Thunder Mastery and Thunder 3. This is a much improved version of Thunder 1. It's improved to a 50 potency hit with a dot of 35 potency still. However, it now lasts for 30 seconds. As a result, the dot is 350 potency and a total 400 potency of damage. So keep in mind, Thunder Clouds are 400 potency of damage. Your need for using Thundercloud on bosses has increased just a bit. Level 50, Ethereal Manipulation. On a very short 10 second cooldown and having a 25 yarm range, you can teleport to an ally. It's not instant, but it is very quick. Being a turret mage, you do not want to be moving around a lot. 
You have to stand still to cast, and what movement you do have already is single casts at a time. You can slide cast, but that's inching around an arena. Ethereal manipulation answers that issue. If you need to travel half the arena in a single instant, target the player across the arena and zoom away. You can even use it while the tank pulls enemies to keep up. Sneak in a cheeky Blizzard 3 to get started, throw in a Thundercast, whatever you want to use, then Ethereal Manipulation to the tank who's running off to the next group. Just be ready to start casting the moment you teleport over. It counts as you moving, so even if it's a short trip, you can't cast during it. If you can use a Manipulation after one of your Firestarter or Thunderclouds, that's the ideal time just so you don't delay your next attack. But take what you can get. If you have to move, move. And do it with teleportation if people are in the right spots. Level 50, Flare. With a massive 4 second cast time and costing all your mana, this does 220 potency to a target and 132 potency to all enemies within 5 yarms of the initial target. And because it's fire based, it gets the buff from Astral Fire. This is your finisher for fire AoE phases. While it says all mana, you only need about 800 mana to cast it. As a result, you can cast a couple fire twos on a bunch of enemies, then when you get low on mana, hit flare. Ideally along with swift cast, and then afterwards you can mana font to use another flare. Always at the end of your fire phase with AoE, use flare. But in single target, do not bother. This is purely for AoE. There's been a lot made of Flare over the years and how it fits into the rotation of Black Mages. Oftentimes, it's been shown that it entirely replaces Fire 2 or such, even at low levels. Due to how the job works at higher levels, I will be recommending you still use Fire 2 beyond just swapping elements, and will be showing off a rotation for this. If later patches adjust potencies to make you skip Fire 2 entirely, don't yell at me. Pre pull, Blizzard 2, and Thunder 2. Fire 2, Fire 2, Fire 2, Fire 2, Swift Cast, Flare, Mana Font, Flare, Blizzard 2, Thunder 2, Freeze, Repeat without Swift Cast and Mana Font. If stuff is even still alive. Now, I list it as pre pull, but that's less pre pull and more a side effect of how players tend to handle trash pulls. While running along with the tank, you want to be a bit higher than Astral or Umbral level 1, ideally. If need be, you can use Blizzard 3 or multiple Blizzard 1s instead. Just try to get to Umbral Ice 3 before the tank stops moving. You can also throw out some thunders as you run and try and proc a thundercloud. Once the tank is done running, you can move into your actual AoE, which will still start with Thunder 2, just to make sure as many enemies have it on them as you can get. Then start spamming fire until you're out of mana, only enough to cast Flare. Whenever we have it, swift cast for Flare, and use Mana Font for an extra Flare when you can. Unfortunately, the long cooldown keeps us from using it more. Then we go back to our Ice Phase, Thunder to refresh the dot, with or without Thundercloud. We have to do a freeze sometimes due to how ticks of mana work out, just like in single target. Other times we can skip the freeze. From there you just repeat as long as you need to to wipe up all the enemies. You can swap to single target spells once you're down to only one or two enemies. If, again, any are even alive. And a final note not shown here, you can buy some ethers. Pop an ether after your second flare, and you can get a third flare. Ultimately though, AoE is a lot more freeform than single target can be. How much the tank will pull, how well they position, how quick they pull everything. Like let's say enemies are going to die mid fire phase, you skip one or more fire twos to go right to flare. There's a lot more factors to deal with. Single target, you work around mechanics, but try not to deviate too much. So remember, this is more a guideline than a hardline rotation. Hopefully this has been a good baseline for you to understand what comes next. Black Mage doesn't like for anything to be simple, but it does all fit together and make sense eventually. It just makes explaining it black magic in itself. Level 52, 
Ley Lines. On a two minute cooldown, this places a circle on the ground. While standing inside of it, anywhere inside of it, not just the center, you can be anywhere inside of it, all of your spells have 15% lower cast and recast times. This circle will remain on the ground for 30 seconds, and it cannot buff your teammates. This makes you even more of a turret mage than you already were. You do not want to leave your ley lines if you can help it. But sometimes AoEs just can't help but target you and be bigger than your ley lines. You can slightly reduce how often this happens by standing to the side of your ley lines while still inside of it. And you can learn where to put your ley lines with practice. Memorizing every single boss fight's positionings, yeah, not reasonable. But something you'll be fighting a lot for farming, for fun, or otherwise, you can memorize where you place your ley lines so you minimize how often you have to leave it, if ever. Otherwise, use this on cooldown. Start your rotation, throw it down, and throw fire even faster than before. Use it on bosses and trash mobs both, just make sure the encounter will be 30 seconds long or more. Level 54, Sharp Cast. On a 60 second cooldown, this ensures your next skill that has an attached proc ability will guaranteed proc the ability. So Thunder will always activate Thundercloud, Fire will always activate Firestarter, and Scathe will always do 200 potency. Why would you do that? The uses of this should otherwise be very clear. Guaranteeing Thundercloud or Firestarter is extremely useful. You're no longer rolling the dice for when you get back to Thunder in your Ice Phase, or if you have to cast it. It's guaranteed to be stronger, or you can use it for movement during your Fire Phase as needed. In AoE, using Sharp Cast to guarantee you maintain Thunder 2 is absolutely golden. For Fire Starter, we will be seeing some of that, but mostly we're going to be focusing on that Thundercloud proc. We'll come back to Sharp Cast at the opener, because without that context, there really is no reason to ever use it on anything but Thunder. Level 56, Enochian. Better called Enochain. This is a passive buff that activates any time you have Astral Fire or Umbral Ice active. I've already tried to impart how important it is to maintain your buff no matter what, but an extra 5% passive damage should add to that too. This comes with another effect though, Enhanced Flare. When using Fire 2 under the effect of Astral Fire, you will be granted Enhanced Flare until you leave Astral Flare. If Infinite Flares was possible, Enhanced Flare would be maintained for every single Flare. It does not get spent and puts every Flare you do at 280 base potency. We always get this, but keep this in mind going forward. Level 58, Blizzard 4. With a cast time of 2.5 seconds and costing 800 mana, this does 310 potency to a single enemy. This all but entirely replaces Blizzard 1, at least as far as any level 58 or higher content. Keep Blizzard 1 on your bars though. The only issue is that Blizzard 4 does not refresh Umbral Ice, but given we only spend 2 or 3 casts in Umbral Ice, there's not much cause for concern. But if for some reason you're delaying due to movement or something, be ready for an emergency Blizzard 1 just to keep your buff running. Or you know, transpose if it really comes down to it. As for the additional effects, you can't use Blizzard 4 unless you are under Umbral Ice, which we'd lead in with Blizzard 2 or 3 anyway. More importantly, Umbral Hearts are given by this, three of them, you can see them appear on your compass. Just wait, this thing gets worse. Anyway, remember what Astral Fire does. It buffs fire spells, but also doubled the cost. Umbral Hearts negate this cost increase. So instead of, say, four fire casts, you can get six because of the extra mana. And more fire casts means more big damage. Given we're a black mage, we want big damage. So whenever we go into our ice phase, Instead of Fairly Blizzards, we're going to use Blizzard 4 just so we can get Umbral Hearts. Then we'll get extra long fire phases that make our damage all the better. And you won't be using this for AoE because... Level 54, Enhanced Freeze. Oh thank god AoE rotations are done. This is giving you your AoE rotation going forward all the way up to level 90. 
What this does is give Freeze the ability to grant you Umbral Hearts, like Blizzard 4. They work the exact same, except let's talk about how Flare interacts with Umbral Hearts. It will eat all of the hearts, but cuts the cost of the spell by a third. Meaning, it won't eat all of our mana. And what we can do with that extra mana? Flare a second time. Then, mana font and flare a third time. Then use an ether and do a quad flare. And because of the reduced flare cost, we can also use some mana on fire too still. This is why I emphasized about enhanced flare. We can get enhanced flare and do four enhanced flares back to back, so long as things are off cooldown. And we can spend the first two hearts on fire too, meaning flare only eats one of the hearts. This is why our rotation will be this going forward. From now on, all the way up to level cap. Blizzard 2, Freeze, Thunder 2, Fire 2, Fire 2, Fire 2, Flare, Flare, Repeat. I'm not including Mana Font or the Aether, but remember these are options. You can also use Ley Lines to speed up this rotation, and Thunder 2, you sharp cast to force a thundercloud if you'd like. I'm keeping the image nice and simple because you have no idea how cathartic it is for Black Mage to not need like three or four different rotations for AoE due to small changes. Blizzard 2 and Thunder 2 are obligatory. Freeze grants us Umbral Hearts for the double flare. The first Fire 2 swaps us to Astral Fire. The second and third to spend mana and activate Enhanced Flare for the double, triple, or quad flares. We will be seeing small additions as we go further, but this base rotation doesn't change. Be sure to check out when I mention AoE uses of skills, because you can integrate them into your opening rotation. Again, while this base rotation doesn't change, AoE is a lot more freeform than single target can be with moment to moment changes in the situation. Level 60, Fire 4. With a 2.8 second cast time and costing 800 mana, this does a massive 310 potency of damage to a target. And because it's fire, Astral Fire buffs it to over 500 potency. Similarly to Blizzard 4, you can only use this while under Astral Fire. Also, like Blizzard 4, this does not refresh your Astral Fire buff. If all you do is use Fire 4, you will lose Astral Fire. As a result, we can't entirely replace Fire 1, despite this being far stronger. We will need Fire 1 purely for maintaining Astral Fire, but we only need Fire 1 for one cast. That's enough to get out a full 6 Fire 4s every rotation of your Astral Fire phase. Get your Umbral Hearts, swap to Fire, do 3 Fire 4s, then Fire 1 to maintain your buff before another volley of 3 Fire 4s. You can otherwise only fit in 4 uses of Fire 4 and not be able to use, say, Mana Font for more Fire 4. And all of this consideration is put into our level 60 opener. While I'd like to present a Fire First opener here, it doesn't feel right. Instead, we'll be doing an Ice First opener, to both get Umbral Hearts and proper use of the Fire Phase. This is also smoother, as this will be your general rotation all the way up to 90, and not just your opener. Your opener will change as we go on, but when you're out of cooldowns or such, this is your normal rotation. Pre-pull, Blizzard 3. Blizzard 4. Thunder 3. Sharp Cast. Fire 3, Ley Lines, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 1, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 3, Mana Font, Fire 4, Fire 4, and then repeat from Blizzard 3. Again, pre-pull means to cast and try and hit the moment the tank pulls. You'll likely end up having the Blizzard 3 after the tank has already pulled. Blizzard 4 and Thunder 3 are obvious starts. However, we have pushed back Sharp Cast. We don't want it on the Thunder currently, but we will be putting it back later on. For now, it's after. Then we head into Fire and throw out Ley Lines to speed up our Fire 4 spam. After three Fire 4s, we use Fire 1 to both spend our Sharp Cast 
and to refresh Astral Fire. Do another three, we'll most often be doing sets of three, and then use our guaranteed fire starter proc. This gives us time to weave in a cooldown for free, specifically Mana Font. This gives us MP enough for two more Fire 4s. At this point, we'll have no more mana for Fire, so we'll go back to Ice. And then we have our normal rotation. Umbral Hearts, Maintain Thunder, two sets of three Fire 4s sandwiching a single Fire 1. Spend Fire Starter procs if you get lucky for them on the Fire 1s. Sharpcast is a pretty short cooldown, so you'll get two more of them before Mana Font comes back up. Feel free to use them for Thunderclouds if the timing works out, but luckily the basic rotation isn't too confusing to get through. Most of the advancements to the rotation were explanations of the skills themselves. So let's karaoke opener. Again, things are going to be a bit slow and slightly affected by levels of spell speed more than any other job. Free pull, Blizzard 3. Blizzard 4. Thunder 3. Tribecast, Fire 3. Leyline, Fire 4. Fire 4. Fire 4. Fire 1. Fire 4. Fire 4. Fire 4. Fire 3, Mana Font. Fire 4. Fire 4. Repeat from Blizzard 3. It plays pretty smooth, if still very turrety. Remember to use your movement tools as needed. We're going to get a few more of them, and also tools that change up our opener even more. Level 62, Between the Lines. On a very short 3 second cooldown, this transport you to the center of your ley lines from within 25 yams away, the same distance as Ethereal Manipulation. Because of this, if your ley lines get targeted by some AoE, you can Ethereal Manipulation to another player, then between the lines back to it after an attack or two, however long it takes for the AoE to vanish. You want to get back to your speed buff after all. The obvious issue is that this has no use at all when ley lines is on cooldown. With no ley lines down, you're stuck with only Ethereal Manipulation, which is still a lot of potential movement. Just make sure whatever AoE is hitting your ley lines doesn't leave behind a puddle of bad. Kind of defeats the point of dodging at that point if you just go into the puddle. Level 64, Thunder Mastery 2 and Thunder 4. Just like Thunder 3, this is a basic increase in power to Thunder 2. Thunder 4 is a nice 50 potency to all enemies hit and 20 potency dot for 18 seconds. In total, this is a 170 potency AoE per enemy hit. Keep it going at all times where you can in AoE, and use Thundercloud for it like normal. Level 66, Triple Cast. This is a skill with charges. Rather than a single one, you have two uses. It takes 60 seconds to gain a charge, and this time it counts down the moment you use a single charge. In total, it takes two minutes to gain back both charges. What it does meanwhile is grant three instant cast spells to be used over the next 15 seconds. This is huge. Stuff like Fire 4 and Flare have such long cast times compared to the other spells in the same phases. Sure, Fire 2 is 3 seconds long, but Flare is 4 seconds? That's a big leap. And if we're doing triple flares with Mana Font or quad flares with Aethers, you're spending 12, 16 seconds casting. Triple cast turns 12 seconds into a much faster 7.5 seconds because your recast times are globally the base 2.5 seconds. And while yes, Fire 4 isn't that much longer a cast, that short amount of time adds up very quickly, especially with how tight some of the later and more optimal openers can be with no spell speed stacked on top. Level 70, Enhanced Enochian. Enochian is now worth 10% damage up, part and parcel to basic black maging. However, now we have a new element to the compass. The bottom right was actually a gauge that slowly fills when under Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. When filled, taking 30 seconds, the new diamond below is filled. This is Polyglot, and is a very important part of our toolkit going forward. Be forewarned, if your Polyglot diamond is already filled when the timer ticks over, 
you lose that stack of polyglot. The one you already have stays filled, but the time it will not remain filled itself while waiting for you to spend your first polyglot. It will reset. And if you drop Astral Fire or Umbral Ice, the timer resets. Again, you shouldn't be letting it drop anyway, but now it's even worse to do so. But what do we even use it on? Level 70? Foul. With a 2.5 second recast time, this costs no mana, but instead costs our Polyglot. So we want to be using this every time we can within the 30 second Polyglot timer. It does 560 potency of damage to a target, and 224 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of the original target. 560 potency is roughly the power of a Fire 4, but you can use it at any time. As long as you are not losing Polyglot stacks or dropping Astral Fire and Umbral Ice, there is no set position for using this. In 10 seconds will a second enemy be in the arena? Wait to use Foul until then. Did you accidentally hold onto the Polyglot and now you're in the middle of your fire phase? That's fine. Foul. This time to fit it in. As long as you are spending, almost any time is fine. Especially if you can use it for AoE. It's far better than even Flare with no cast time. Anytime you can maximize the number of enemies hit by Foul, go for it. This is by far your biggest hit now. Makes sense you're only getting one every 30 seconds. And again, when we use it is extremely flexible. As long as you use it, you're good. But as far as an opener, we can get it only after we get back to our Blizzard phase for the first time. Fetting in triple cast to get through it sooner makes the rotation overall smoother as well. Prey pull, sharp cast, and Blizzard 3. Blizzard 4, Thunder 3, Ley Lines, Fire 3, Triple Cast, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 4, Swift Cast, Fire 1, Triple Cast, Fire 4, Mana Font, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 4, Blizzard 3, Blizzard 4, Thunder 3, Foul, repeat from Fire 3. So okay, if you are still comfy with the level 60 opener, you can still do that, but with Triple Cast and Foul inserted into the same spots. That is perfectly fine. However, I want to explain the shift here. We've moved Sharp Cast back to pre pull in order to proc Thundercloud. This will make sense going into Shadowbringers and Endwalkers levels, but consistent Thundercloud is better. But part of that is, thanks to Triple Cast, we do not need that Firestarter proc anymore for Mana Font. If we move Ley Lines back to before Fire 3, our entire Fire Phase is sped up just enough that when we use Triple Cast, even with zero spell speed, we have just enough time to fit in all eight Fire 4s. Both Triple Casts and the Swift Cast ensure we have weaving room and speed up Fire 4 enough to not lose Astral Fire mid-rotation. This ensures that when we make it back to our Ice Phase, we definitely have a Thundercloud for the opener and a Polyglot to spend. There is no guarantee we get it for future Thunderclouds, but that too will change with future openers. Again, if you are more comfortable with the fire starter based opener, feel free to continue using it, but if you want to start developing muscle memory for what we'll do with the future openers, here it is. Also warning, triple cast and swift cast are important movement tools. Be absolutely sure you don't need them when using them in openers. It does indeed up your damage and even makes this rotation possible at the cost of your tools. And given we're a turret mage, Losing what little movement we have can be dangerous. That comes with the territory, but is something to consider when choosing which opener you use. This one is for when you know for sure you're not going to be needing triple cast. But let's sing a song of Black Mage with a karaoke opener of this opener. How very dame dane. Free pool, sharp cast, Blizzard 3. Blizzard 4. Thunder 3, Ley Lines, Fire 3, Triple Cast, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 4, Swift Cast, Fire 1, Triple Cast, 
Fire four. Mana font. Fire four. Fire four. Fire four. Fire four. Blizzard three. Blizzard four. Thunder three. Foul. Repeat from fire three. Stormblood mostly gave us some fun new tools that help us deal with turreting more. We're gonna fill in a few more things with Shadowbringers, and we'll bring us right around to our normal opener soon. Level 72, Despair. This is our single target version of Flare. It costs all of our mana, needing a minimum of about 800, and does 340 potency to a single target. It grants Astral Fire 3 as well, so unlike Fire 4, it acts as a refresh. Its cast time is 3 seconds. Just like with Flare, we use this as a finisher move for our single target fire phase, but unlike AoE, Manafont won't just feel one flare. Consider that Despair empties your mana. Hit Manafont and you get 3000 mana. If you use a fire 4, you have 1400 mana left over. Not enough for fire 4, but enough for Despair. So you can get two Despairs with Manafont and still get in an extra fire 4. Then you go back to your ice phase. But yeah, this is how you should always finish up your fire phase in single target now. It's a big finishing hit and worth the time to cast. A little mana goes a long way with this. Level 74, Enhanced Sharp Cast. Simply put, this reduces the cooldown of Sharp Cast from 60 seconds to 30 seconds. This doesn't seem special, but this is a huge change to our rotation. For example, here I'm only doing the level 60 rotation of skills, ignoring mana font, triple cast, spare, foul, and I'm still getting back around to the ice phase as sharp cast comes off of cooldown. Thundercloud being 40 seconds long means that using sharp cast we can infinitely keep thunder running with only thundercloud, a permanent 100% proc rate. Cutting the cooldown in half alone is nice, but the effect it has on our rotation as a whole has huge consequences for how much nicer to play Black Mage can be. Always use Sharp Cast to get a Thundercloud now. Keep it running permanently. Level 76, Umbral Soul. An instant cast and on the global cooldown, this can only be used when under Umbral Ice. It grants an additional stack of Umbral Ice up to the 3 max every time you press it. It also grants an Umbral Heart with every use, which means after three uses, you have Umbral Ice 3 and three Umbral Hearts and a full Umbral Ice timer of 15 seconds. This is the natural evolution of Transpose, but doesn't 100% replace Transpose. Let's say you finish a fight. You just did Despair, and now you have zero mana and no enemies to fight. You're in Astral Fire, so you transpose over to Umbral Ice to regain mana. Then you hit Umbral Soul a bunch, until the next pack of enemies, or boss. You not only just maintain your Enochian to progress your Polyglot stacks, but you can skip Blizzard 4 and Freeze. Do any other setup you need like Thunder 3 and 4, and then start blasting away. This massively smooths out the between battle phase of Black Mage. Transpose is clunky due to you swapping back and forth. Umbral Soul has the same purpose while putting you ahead in your rotation. It's extremely nice to have. And again, just in case you needed a reminder, you can do this in boss fights too. If the boss leaves the arena, pop Umbral Soul. Level 78, Enhanced Enochian 2. This has a 15% damage boost under Astro Fire and Umbral Ice. Unlike the last two that had other effects, that's it. Level 80, Enhanced Polyglot and Enhanced Foul. These two traits aren't entirely tied together, but are close enough related. Enhanced Polyglot allows you two stacks of Polyglot. You can still overcap by trying to store three at once, but it's less dangerous now. Enhanced Foul, meanwhile, turns Foul into an instant cast spell. This makes Foul infinitely more usable and flexible. Remember, even with Triple Cast, our movement abilities are limited. We tend to try to use those in our openness too. Foul, and having two of them available if needed, means we can just have a more guaranteed bit of movement. Foul is a movement tool too, remember that. It just happens to be a super strong one, and for AoE only. Level 80, Xenoglossy. 
This is also a movement tool. This replaces Foul in single target. It's simply our single target version of Foul. It does a massive 760 potency to a target. That is amazing. It only costs one of your polyglot, grants you a GCD of movement, and is just overly strong. A strategy you can use is to always have a polyglot stored. If you get two polyglot, use one of them, but keep the other one always available for movement, be it so you can weave ethereal manipulation without clipping, normal sideways movement to dodge a small AoE, or whatever. Using them the moment you get them is very tempting, I know. But the movement capabilities are just as strong as the damage it does. However, let's start building into a level 90 opener. Remember that at level 70 we shifted Sharp Cast back. This is going to show why we started practicing it, thanks to Despair and Enhanced Sharp Cast. Pre-pull, Sharp Cast, Fire 3, Thunder 3, Triple Cast, Fire 4, Fire 4, Ley Lines, Fire 4, Swift Cast, Fire 4, Triple Cast, Despair, Mana Font, Fire 4, Despair, Blizzard 3, Blizzard 4, Thunder 3, then back to Fire 3. A few things need to be noted here. While we do use our first Thunder 3 under fire, all future Thunder 3s can stay within Umbral Ice. Leylines is used a little bit late because of a potential potion window if you wish to get into that level of content. And obviously, we're starting in Astral Fire now. All Astral Fire phases after this will be the level 60 version, two sets of Fire 4s, then ending with Despair. Also, the Thunder 3 we use here so early, raid buffing, we refresh it before everyone's party buffs wear off. We're starting this now, mostly because come level 90, your ice phase in this opener is going to get a little bit longer and much more meaningful. I've been slowly guiding you here and building muscle memory where I can since 60 for that opener and this is the closest to resembling the 90 opener we will get. Get ready to add in those Endwalker buffs, but build muscle memory now rather than later. But otherwise, the rules remain the same as always. More fire is good. If we can skip the setup to immediately start blowing everything up, that's also good. But let's karaoke it. It's quite a bit different, so you'll need to adjust to a very new pace. Pre-pull, sharp cast, fire three. Thunder 3, Triple Cast, Fire 4, Fire 4, Ley Lines, Fire 4, Swift Cast, Fire 4, Triple Cast, Despair, Mana Font, Fire 4, Despair, Blizzard 3, Blizzard 4, Thunder 3, then back to Fire 3. I do hope the Sudden Shift wasn't too confusing. If you really need to again, level 60 openness still works but with the new additions like Permanent Thundercloud. But get ready, at 90, we're fully swapping over to the Fire First opener. Level 82, Aspect Mastery 4, High Fire 3, and High Blizzard 3. Welcome to the big leagues, or high leagues I guess. High Fire 2 and High Blizzard 2 are just potency boosts, but decently large ones. They are now 140 potency each. While High Blizzard is stronger than Freeze, we still want the Umbral Hearts it gives. Enjoy the animations though. Level 84, Enhanced Mana Font. Very simple, reduces Mana Font to a two minute cooldown. Being able to use it more often means you can repeat the opener's double despair more often. It doesn't have nearly the same impact as Sharpcast did though. Level 86, Enhanced Enochian 3. Remember how I kept Enhanced Enochian 2 short? 20%. Level 86, Amplifier. On a 2 minute cooldown, this grants us a stack of Polyglot. It can only be used when under Ice of Fire, which just means we can't use it outside of battle. That's a free use of Foul or Xenoglossy every 2 minutes. We're gonna make use of this for openers, but this is technically also a movement tool just because of it granting Polyglot. The same rules all still apply, if you need to hold onto stacks for heavy movement based mechanics, hold it, then unleash them while running. Don't leave Amplifier off cooldown though. Remember, you can hold two stacks of Polyglot. 
as long as you're not going to cause an overcap and lose it from the timer ticking over, just pop Amplifier for a free use. Better to have the cooldown running than just not using it. Level 88, Enhanced Sharp Cast 2. We can now hold two uses of Sharp Cast. It now has charges up to a maximum of two. This brings the total cooldown back up to 60 seconds, but each charge is every 30. Now you can potentially even use the second stack for other things, but we'll have a use for it in the opener at 90 as well. It still mostly leaves us only to having enough for the Perpetual Thundercloud with a rare extra uses for a fire starter. Level 90, Aspect Mastery 5, and Paradox. Okay, this is a weird one, but a very strong one. Aspect Mastery 5 is the trigger points for gaining Paradox, and added a new little thingy to the gauge. Which, by the way, the rotation that was almost meta focused exclusively on this skill. To gain Paradox, you must do... basically what we've already been doing. This is just to stop from any meme openers from happening, which almost did anyway. When under Astral Fire 3 and swapping to Umbral Ice, you gain Paradox. Meanwhile, when under Umbral Ice 3, you also need three Umbral Hearts before swapping to Astral Fire. When Paradox is gained, Blizzard and Fire become Paradox. As for Paradox the skill itself, this is a 2.5 second cast costing 1600 mana. When under Astral Fire, it has the exact effects as Fire 1. This includes the chance for Fire Starter, but doesn't get the 1.8 times multiplier from Astral Fire. You wish. When under Umbral Ice, it has no cast time and refreshes Umbral Ice. Oh, and the cost is zero, but you're under Umbral Ice so the regen took care of it anyway. This is worth using every single time. If you have Paradox, you're using it. It's just too strong to ignore. That's why it almost became a rotation all on its own. Oh, and it's single target. So even if you get Paradox when you're doing AoE, don't bother. And as a result, we have our level 90 opener. It incorporates all the elements we've learned up to now. All the openers, all the rotations, for this moment. Let's go through it, then talk about it. Pre-pull, Sharp Cast, Fire 3. Thunder 3, Triple Cast, Fire 4, Fire 4, Amplifier, Ley Lines, Fire 4, Swift Cast, Fire 4, Triple Cast, Despair, Mana Font, Fire 4, Sharp Cast, Despair, Blizzard 3, Xenoglossy, Paradox, Blizzard 4, Thunder 3, then begin your normal rotation from Fire 3. Now we see why I went this direction for level 80. We start off the exact same, get our Perpetual Thundercloud going, triple cast into Fire 4 spam. The first addition is double weaving amplifier with ley lines. Our next change is right before our second despair. We pop our second sharp cast. At 80 it was a toss up in our opener if we fully started the Perpetual Thundercloud. This second Thundercloud guarantees we can keep Thundercloud going for an entire fight that has no forced downtime. Every single time we use Thunder after this will come with a sharp cast. Immediately after getting into Umbral Ice, we spend our Xenoglossy to fit under raid buffs. Then we have our Paradox to spend, and then from here we scoop back into our rotation as we've been using since level 60. Blizzard 4 for hearts and more Paradox, Thunder 3 to use that sharp cast and keep Thundercloud going, and again, because raid buffs. And again, we're back to the normal rotation after this. 3-3 three, three Fire 3s, Despair, and all the other bells and whistles that we got over the last 30 levels. This has probably been the smoothest evolution Black Mage has ever had. But before we get too retrospective, we have some karaoke to do, so let's be the opposite of the Piano Man. Pre-pull, Tripe Cast. Fire 3. Thunder 3. Triple Cast. Fire 4. Fire 4. Amplifier. Ley Lines. Fire 4. Swift Cast. Fire 4. Triple Cast. Despair. Mana Font. Fire 4. Sharp Cast. Despair. Blizzard 3. 
Xenoglossy. Paradox. Blizzard 4. Thunder 3. Begin your normal rotation from Fire 3. And let's just quick look at the kind of stuff you can do at this level for AoE, now that we have so many new things. Again, still the same opener, just with a ton of OG CDs added. While I say this is the smoothest Black Mage has ever been, it's still a lot. Please ask anything you didn't understand. I do not blame anyone for getting confused by Black Mage. There's a reason why my top-down description of the job is real-life black magic. Thank you for watching this Black Mage 1-90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I'm always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. Or even go to my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anna and Hogsley waste to your enemies.